Everyone remembers how amazing Jurassic Park was with its mind-blowing practical effects for the T-Rex and Raptors, or the at, -AT Walkers and the Snowspeeders in Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. However, to get to that point, film had to undergo major development. In 1902, Georges Méliès' sci-fi classic A Trip to the Moon was the first real attempt at practical effects. The story tells of a group of scientists who fire themselves to the moon via a huge space cannon, then fight some moon aliens before heading back home. Through his use of sets, costumes and practical effects, such as the moon which was actually made out of cheese and plastered onto Melier's face, he succeeded in creating a fully believable science fiction world. The film's use of revolutionary practical effects paved the way for stories to come to life. In 1927, at the time the most expensive film ever made was Metropolis, and it was an important leap in practical effects. Its influence can be seen in films such as the Star Wars trilogy and the original Blade Runner. Miniatures allowed filmmakers to create scale in their films. Instead of constructing huge objects which would have been far too costly to build full size, miniature replicas were built and then shot close to the camera to make them seem life size. This allowed filmmakers to indulge their wildest dreams and create fully working futuristic cities. Eugene Shufton further advanced the use of miniatures in film by his Shufton process, which has now more commonly become known as matte painting. An environment that could not otherwise exist is seamlessly painted onto the film after the actors have been filmed. This is an effect that allows the actors to interact with their surroundings. This effect has also given us some of the most iconic images in cinema history, including the Statue of Liberty in Planet of the Apes, and the secret government warehouse at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Matte painting had been used by filmmakers since 1907, however, it was only when Technicolor took off that the effect became noticed. The Wizard of Oz was the perfect showcase for the impact a truly great matte painting could have on a movie. Dorothy's approach to the Emerald City wouldn't have become a legendary image if it hadn't been for the skills of the artists such as Candelo Rivas, who worked on the film to create the background images and entirely matte sets. One of the most memorable and best used practical effects was in Steven Spielberg's Jaws. After being told by everyone he approached that the animatronic shark which could work in the ocean would be impossible to build, Spielberg approached the legendary Bob Matney. Matney, who had created the giant squid in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, agreed to come out of retirement to make the shark. What Matney delivered was to go down in history and change the way films were marketed and released. Bruce, as the animatronic shark was named, was an engineering marvel that was ahead of its time. So ahead of its time, in fact, that the technology wasn't really ready yet to make it work. The $250,000 shark ended up causing delay after delay during the shooting of the film. It sank, its motor would stop working due to saltwater corrosion, or it would get entangled with seaweed. The original 55-day shoot ended up taking 159 days. The malfunctioning shark taught Spielberg everything he needed to know about how to properly utilize practical effects. He decided to enact the Hitchcock principle of less is more and hinted at the shark instead of showing it. Editing and music became his weapons and glimpses of the shark proved far more effective at portraying the deadly menace than the full shots. Jaws proved that you could harness the power of practical effects into something truly awesome. The release date was pushed to the summer, traditionally a low period for cinemas then, and Jaws' huge success in test screenings prompted Universal to push for a wide release nationwide. They backed this up with a massive marketing campaign. It worked, and the modern blockbuster as we know it was born. Spielberg continued to push the boundaries of practical effects and animatronics, but perhaps his finest work in the medium came with the film people associate as being the crowning glory of early CGI effects. Jurassic Park. The running herds of dinosaur rightly drew praise upon release, offering digital work which stands up to this day. But it was the puppetry animatronics and old-fashioned man-in-a-suit effect that truly make Jurassic Park come to life. Stan Winston was one of the leading figures who redefined what could be done with creature design and puppetry. The Velociraptors remain the most terrifying of his creations, especially considering that most of the tense kitchen sequence where Lex and Tim are hunted by their deadly dinosaur, was performed by a man in a suit. But even though only 4 minutes out of the 14 involving dinosaurs were made using exclusively digital effects, the die had been cast. 
This is the future, and while practical effects would complement the digital work, the days of being front and centre are numbered.